We are running over a little bit, so I'm just going to ask um, Tom Gilday, who's the director of interventional pulmonology at Cle Cleveland Clinic, had prepared really nice cases, but unfortunately, people are looking at me outside because the scientific symposium is at seven. So we're going to have time to do one case, and all these cases are in uh, in your flash drive. So you can email us um, if you have questions. We'll do one, only one uh, case, and then we'll have to leave this room and. I, I think what I noticed today is there's a lot of interest. I think we need more time and more sessions like this. So uh, this was our first one, and hopefully we'll um, do more of these sessions. So, Tom, which case are you going to do? The first one? No. Uh, this one. Uh, I'm going to put this one up. I'm going to cut through it. You know, talk about feeling unvalued. I get one slide. <laughs> so it is the best slide of the night because it's the last one before the drinks start. So, so basically, this is. I just want to point out a couple of very important pieces. Just one piece, you know, one one concept here is documentation is literally everything. So this is a patient who's in the ICU with bronchiectasis, six exacerbation with pneumonia, develops respiratory failure. You could go ahead and intubate and use your three one five zero zero code. Uh, upon the uh, intubation, the post-intubation chest x-ray shows right lung atelectasis, and the guy's bringing up tons of secretions as patients with bronchiectasis are wont to do. You could then go ahead and do a bronchoscopy. It's common, right? A bronchoscopy gets done. If you go ahead and do a bronchoscopy and send some secretions for cultures, that's a 31622. Very simple. That's not what most people do. <laughs> What most people do uh, is to look at things a little differently if you, and that, again, let me just prove that. That's what most people write and that's what most people do, but that's not actually what you can get paid for if you do it appropriately. First is to recognize that you're doing this thing for a specific therapeutic intent. The person's got atelectasis, you're going to clean out the secretions and open up the lungs. So this now is a therapeutic aspiration procedure. Secondly, if you're going to do a BAL, if you're going to wedge the scope and do a BAL, you get a 31624. So right now, you just went from a 31622 base code to a 31645 for a therapeutic aspiration, and you can do the BAL. It's a 31624. You get more money for it if it's the BAL that you need. If it's just a wash, just, you, know, you just get that. And then the, the, the next issue about this, and I just wanted to point out the therapeutic aspiration code. Again, it has to be with specific intent, and you have to document it as such. There's another code that says you know, with a subsequent case. Now, subsequent, I thought, meant if I had to go back in the same day. Subsequent really means during the same admission. And it means that if you have to go back and bronch that patient one, two, more, three times during that hospitalization, you, you build the, the 4-6 code. And the reason for that is, is that the assessment or the understanding is that you've already the HFP, you already know the patient, you're just going back and doing the clean out. So that's the only case I wanted to just show you because that's probably one of the, the most common codes that shows up in all of my institutes. There's over a thousand of these show up a year in my Bronx suite um, on our codes because of the ICU team. So I just wanted to put that out uh, as the last thing I want to teach you, okay? Excellent. Thank you very much, Tom, and apologize for this short piece of tape. We actually have time for one question. Does anybody have any burning questions? All right. If you can give the faculty a round of applause. Thank you so much. This was uh, a great presentation. And please email us with questions, and hopefully we'll do this again next year. Thank you.